and welcome to this week's Weird Wednesday. In today's show, we're going to talk about the death of Queensland's largest croc, uh, a gassy hippo, uh, a Sorry. monster fish, <laughs> uh, sea creatures using rubbish, and plenty of other stories. So let's not dive straight into the news, because actually today's Sean's birthday. Um, so as many lovely messages down in the comments below for Sean's birthday. Um, yeah. He'll be getting his birthday bumped later today. Uh, so yeah, let's jump straight <laughs> into the news. Uh, so an underwater jetpack. So Ryan Kung uh, and David Shulman have invented something rather special. Uh, an underwater jetpack, sort of. Sort of. Um, now normally this sort of thing uh, takes years to master, test and build, uh, but not for these two. The jetpack took hardly any time to design or build. Um, <laughs> is that a good thing? I don't know. <clears throat> um, their inspiration for the jetpack was of course Iron Man, because what's, Iron Man. what's better than Iron Man? Iron Man. Um, but um, but the, the, I the you, man. <laughs> but safe rather than um, sort of make a jetpack that flies in the air, they just made one that flew under the water. Yeah, like, yeah, it's safer, isn't it? Even though you could drown. <laughs> yeah, you you got to be careful about decompression because you can't just. Zzz. Oh, I think they've already done it in the pool. It's like literally. Oh, there's the floor. Don't. In a, kid, a kid's paddling pool. It's about that big. <coughs> Just see these full grown men. Um, so, ha <laughs> so how did they create this suit? Turns out they just order some motors and, uh, and propellers and strap them to their arms and legs. That's literally it. That's kind of it. Um, now there are a lot of underwater jetpacks on the market and some are even powered by water, which is pretty cool. Um, so Ryan and David plan to follow suit and become the leaders in the jetpack field. Um, I've seen quite a few that like strap to your thighs and um, apparently it's quite intuitive because you just kind of keep your legs and it just buzzes you around. These ones, they've got them attached to your arms as well, so yeah. There. I don't know, it's weird. It's like, if I was to wear, you know you've got those jetpacks where they come out of the water and they're yeah. used to pop open. Like, if, it, if I was to use one of those, I would go straight. straight. <laughs> so I know if I was to use this jetpack, I'd just be like, oh, yeah. and I'm like, like, you know in the medieval times where they get hung, drawn and quartered? <laughs> That'll be me. Yeah, oh, ah! <laughs> I'd, I'd stuck them on the wrong way or something, you know, just. Like literally just pull myself apart. But it's cool though, it's good that, that you know, you got to keep these things going, you know. Oh yeah, you, you only have to swim into a bit of current and realise, oh I could do with some help here. Yeah, so it, it's good, and also it's good that, yes, it's very much what you and your mates make in the garage, <laughs> but that's how things start, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, as long as they got all their seals and the batteries sorted, then yeah. No, it's a plug. What's the They've got an extension cord. <laughs> <laughs> come on, come back. <coughs> anyway, monster fish. Now, yeah. Now we've all been there. A fish has just died, and you go to bury them in the porcelain. Great. <laughs> Only as you start to flush the toilet, the start the fish starts to wiggle about. Always happens. Always happens. Now, some though, some of those fish that you thought once were dead are now haunting haunting the waters in Australia. <laughs> Scary. Goldfish are now being caught that have somehow survived sewage treatment and are now flourishing in the waters. <laughs> it's gone so bad in Oz that they're now discouraging people from flushing their pets down the loo. This is how, guys, the zombie apocalypse happens. It starts with the goldfish. Yeah. No, 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 no. It's when you try, it's when you kill someone and you try and flush their body <coughs> down the toilet. Everyone knows it's the best way of getting rid of a body. I've done it many times. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> yeah. And uh, the sewage treatment brings them back to life. <laughs> anyway, anyway, just you know, like I said, the fact that they're having to issuing official statements asking people not to flush <laughs> their deadish goldfish down the toilet is pretty crazy. But uh, I do stress that it's not actually illegal. It's not illegal to do that. Well, for now, it's pretty no. cool. But yeah, these things like the picture, I'm sure the picture's popped yeah. up, but they are matte, like this goldfish is literally that big. Like the Toxic Avenger <laughs> and all of that, just goldfish. Well, there's a the thing with goldfish, they're, they're supposed to grow to the size of their environment. Yeah. So yeah, these guys are just kind of, oh, I've gotten out of that small fish tank. Yeah, oh, they yeah, just out. <laughs> yeah, especially with the added with the added sewer treatment. They're like, <laughs> <laughs> the, the roids 
It is like goldfish on roids, guys. So basically, if your goldfish is upside down and floating on the surface of your tank, just wait, because normally if you like overfeed them, they do that. They get some air in their tummy and they just can't sink. Cool. So they're fine, they're not dead. They, they might just be a little fat. Um, so don't feed them for a few days. It's basically when they start smelling a bit. Or, yeah, you can, it was it, no, the, the whites of the eyes, don't they? Yeah. Or oh, it's got, the, the classic, it's got crosses. <laughs> the fish has crosses in its eyes, you know, unfortunately. <laughs> Unless you know, you just don't like the fish. Yeah. Or oh, you want superhuman fish. Yeah. So, no, it's not superhuman fish, super no, fishy fish. Super fish fish. Uh, so, baby hippos. Uh, so this is uh, just the internet is just... The internet is a wonderful, mysterious place where anything <laughs> can go viral. So, uh, so a video has gone viral uh, of Fiona, beautiful name, lovely. Uh, Fiona the hippo blowing bubbles from both ends. Uh, so Cincinnati Zoo uh, is only nine months, oh, sorry. Fiona, who lives at Cincinnati Zoo, uh, is only nine months old and she's been hit with visitors ever. <coughs> been a hit, yeah. been a hit uh, since yeah. she was born. Come here, come on, Fiona. <laughs> I thought that was a weird thing to say. Mate, she is the, the hippo <laughs> uh, But this funny video has now made her one of the most famous hippos in the world. Name one other famous hippo, Sean. Frank. Yeah. Henry, <coughs> Henry, the hippo. Hungry, hungry hippo. Hungry, hungry hippo. <laughs> there were four of them. Uh, so yeah, she's one of the most famous hippos in the world because she farted. <laughs> <coughs> Uh, so, so far in this video um, on, uh, on sort of Facebook has had 214,000 views. 12,000. Tw 12, 12, 12, 12 likes. 12, that's like one of our videos. <laughs> 12 likes, we'll be lucky. 12,000 likes and over 6,000 shares and it is funny. Uh, it's, it's cute, it's, it's, it's nature, weird. it's weird, hence why it's, it's, it's a cute little hippo, nine months old, she's got a little, nice little cute and she just goes, <laughs> that's literally it. Uh, so now it's time for our promo. So have you seen our latest video about James Cameron? No one has. I, I wasn't part of it. Um, <laughs> it went live on our channel on Friday. Uh, in the video, James uh, talks about how Cameron fell in love with diving and how it inspired his filmmaking career. Uh, so check it out in a link that's just popped up below or down in the description below. Death of a Queensland croc. So a croc that was 5.2 meters long died last week. Oh. It's a tiny, tiny little thing. <laughs> this thing's actually massive. The, just the trailer that it's on <laughs> is nuts. Anyway, he was dubbed king of the saltwater lake and he was also the biggest croc ever been recorded so far in Queensland. The croc was sadly shot to death. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh. uh, and this obviously has experts worried. So I believe someone was kind of traveling in the lake. They were on a boat or whatever, or they were near the lake and they saw the thing like, uh, Oh, no, man. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't want this thing near me, so you know, typical uh, hick. Is it hicks over there? Rednecks? Queens? No, I don't know. No, no, they won't have them down in there. Uh, yeah, they won't. Or oh, whatever, they just shot him. But yeah, so he's dead. Yeah, experts are worried though, but not because of uh, the croc was shot dead. Just, just call up Crocodile Dundee. Oh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Come on, mate. Come on. Come on, have a day. Go anyway, on. Anyway, look, I am doing a story. I can interrupt you, you cannot interrupt me. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> God. so obviously they're worried not because the croc was shot, but because now the biggest croc is now dead, there's going to be a power struggle. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be very deadly going near the lake. It's going to be like one of those mafia hits. Mm. Maybe it was and in you know, one of the, the, the croc that was 4.8 metres went to a human. like, oh, mate, we'll leave you alone for a bit. A lot shoot, of just awkward standoffs <laughs> with their eyes just dancing backwards and forwards. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so uh, what's even more concerning is that now the croc is dead, uh, the, well the croc itself that had actually died was between 80 to 100 years old, Whoa. meaning that this, this croc ruled the roost for some time. So, yeah, everyone is now on high alerts around the, around the lake and it's obviously being wanted around the croc as well, yeah. so there's going to be some serious you know, serious issues. You yeah, know. just territory wars, because everyone's gonna be, oh, okay, well he's out. I think I'm next in charge. Yeah. No, I think I'm next in charge. Yeah. Uh -uh. So yeah, that's why, you know, they're doing it around the clock, so only humans go, oh, this looks nice, I'm just gonna dip my toe in. No. Uh, yeah, no. So, you know, they wanna help reduce 
well, injuries and fatalities. There was a guy not that long ago, he was like washing his hands in the lake or whatnot, and he just got pulled in. Yeah. So, yeah, just stay away from Well, him. they need to do, the, they need to get that voodoo guy. <laughs> yeah, he did really well. Oh, the one that brought the body back? Yeah, he brought the body back. He was like, voodoo magic. Ooh, <laughs> crocodile dundee, but in India. <laughs> Uh, so brainless and sleepy. I am. Yeah. Uh, so the story is uh, is a gold standard when it comes to weird news. So scientists, because because always because scientists, scientists. Uh, crept into a Caltech lab where Cassiopeia jellyfish are kept. Mm? Are you impressed that I said Cassiopeia? Oh, yeah. I, was, I was like Cassiopeia. <laughs> <coughs> oh, the autocorrect kept on putting other words in. I'm like, I want this <laughs> word. Stop, stop adding stuff. Uh, so rather than switch on the lights, they used the phone to navigate through the tanks of jellyfish. Uh, but why were they sneaking about? Well, they're doing a study to see if jellyfish sleep. You're not better things <laughs> to <laughs> research. My, my dissertation <coughs> I got this grant for 50,000 trillion pounds. Let's see if... Jellyfish sleep. Yeah, I want to know. Jellyfish sleep. <laughs> That's pretty easy. Yeah, no, I don't want to learn about global warming and all the effects That's of... That's fake anyway. Yeah, no. Right, about j- jellyfish sleep? Yeah, do jellyfish sleep? I'm going to study... Well, it's like those scientists that took 10 years to study the best way of making a cup of tea. <laughs> I'm like, really? You're a scientist? Put the milk in first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, M- move on, move on. One should pour the tea into the cup first. This is one of the most controversial points of all. But I maintain that by putting the tea in first, one can more precisely regulate the amount of milk that goes in, whereas you're liable to put too much milk in if you do it the other way around. (laughs) Uh, So, and after uh, months of sneaking around, they finally got all the results and um, they were shocked at what they actually discovered. Oh my God. Uh, so what the research told them was the Cassiopeia jellyfish actually fall asleep during the night. <laughs> uh, so they say that this behavior was a, uh, evolved early in the history of jellyfish uh, and it stuck with them ever since. Um, so that's sort of amazing, a bit weird. Yeah. They say because it's, because it's brainless, it doesn't have a tangible brain, the fact that it sleeps is Weird. Yeah, they say that this pattern, like, whereas in we know we're tired, our brain is saying that we're tired, we go to sleep. Yeah. What makes them go to sleep? Because they don't have a brain. Because just... they don't have a brain. But yeah, it's basically it's instilled through their genetics from, you know, 6,000 years ago, because that's how old the earth is. Um, and through that, yeah, <laughs> yeah, millions of years of evolution. And it's yeah. just brought down that trait has stayed with them where they can sleep. Which is, which is great, it means, you know, they don't get bagged under the Yeah, eyes. groundbreaking news, yeah. this, this is going to change the, the world as we know it. Yeah. That jellyfish sleep. It's going to be the next biggest Hollywood blockbuster universe, cinematic universe. Is it asleep? They can't sleep. No, you fall, dun, of dun, course. Dun, dun. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> anyway, fish shop cycle, our rubbish. So, photographer Natalie Bond... Uh, I'm going to say it, Bond... Uh, no, I'm not... Bondarenko. Yeah, Bondarenko was diving in Indonesia when she discovered something rather amazing. Every year, tons of rubbish gets thrown into the ocean by me and Mark. (laughs) By the world. Um, But the marine life in Indonesia actually taken advantage of it. So her photos show that marine life... Oh, there we go. Her her photos, sorry, show that marine life are creating new homes out of our old rubbish. From jam jars, tyres, pretty much anything they can get there bins on. It's just awesome to see Mother Nature clawing something back from our waste. It's just a weird thing to see, especially the picture of the little octopus in the jam jar, sitting there all happy. You've got yeah. you've got a dude just chilling out in a tyre. Yeah. I mean, it shouldn't be there, but it's glad that they're reclaiming it back. Yeah, I've seen projects where people try and they, they take like old tires down to create coral reefs, I think. Yeah. Um, I think that's what they were doing. So, nah, they wanted to get rid of the tires. Nature, nature finds a way. Nature f- oh. <laughs> I'm gonna have to put that clip in, aren't I? Yeah. Here's the clip. <coughs> Life uh, finds a way. 
Uh, and, uh, and that's it for this week. Uh, it's the last time you can vote for us as Dive Retailer of the Year in the Diver Awards. Uh, the Diver Awards close on the 30th of September. Uh, so please... Uh, it's Friday? It's, it's Saturday? Yeah, sort of end of the week. Yeah. Um, so there'll be a, a link below to, um, to, the, to the voting page. If you can vote for us, we would greatly appreciate it. Um, so um, thanks for watching, guys, and safe diving. <laughs>